Welcome to Hexus. We're here with Leslie Sobin, who's the VP of the desktop division at AMD. Welcome back to Hexus, Leslie. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Leslie, uh, we've heard a lot about this APU buzzword over the you know, past year, I guess. And, yes. uh, you know, can you bring us up to speed on what's happening with APU for AMD? Sure. So we have our new mainstream APU, which has been codenamed Trinity. Um, that's been in the OEM part of the market now for about six months. And we're launching uh, next week um, Trinity in the channel. So we're very excited. This is our next generation improvements on import, uh, in, uh, performance, improvements on infrastructure, and those sorts of things that I'm sure we'll talk about today. Okay. Um, with It's interesting you mentioned that it's been in the OEM sector yes. and then launching into the channel. This is, yes. this is different. Why, why has that happened that way? The reason is really the FM1 infrastructure for the current generation, which as uh, your readers probably know and your viewers know as um, Lano. Uh, the FM1 infrastructure is not forwards compatible to the FM2 infrastructure. So for the channel, for our partners, and for the people who bought the product, we wanted to give them a little bit more time with the product before we introduced it into the channel. Mm. At the same time, for the multinationals or the OEM community, the spring time frame for back to school and getting ready for um, that demand generation cycle, it was very important that we launched for them in June. Okay. With um, Lana, there's a load of problems with manufacturing and getting enough out into the channel and this sort of thing. Have is there going to be these problems this time? Is there a lot of stock no, available? Is a lot fixed? of stock available. And also we'll be launching the full stack, which is different than what we've done historically in the channel. Usually when we introduce a product, we'll introduce at the top of the stack and probably the end of that quarter or maybe into the next quarter, we'll do the full stack. This time on October 2nd, it'll be a full stack launch. A4, 6, 8, and A10 will be launching. Okay. And what about, um, you know, it's interesting that you guys are a push and desktop. We're, every day we're hearing about tablets taking over the know, world and smartphones. I know, this, you know, I know, and I run the desktop division, <laughs> and nobody thinks it's sexy anymore. <laughs> so it's a great responsibility you have. So you know, is desktop a strong focus for AMD? What, what how's that going to pan out over the next? Certainly, the future is mobility. I mean, I, I we all see the numbers. I see the numbers too. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that all the press and all the noise are on the shiny objects that are tablets. Roughly, according to IDC, about 140 million or so desktops will be sold this year. It's still a big part of the market. Mm -hmm. So for AMD, the focus is clearly on mobility. But what we want to do is make sure that we can still offer very good, compelling products for the desktop market because it's a it's a big part of the market still, even though people don't tend to write about it all that much. Okay. And what do you aim tar target market share in the desktop market in the next uh, you know, going forward the next couple of quarters? Well, I we don't sh specifically lay out our you know our share gains at this point, but I will say that we are looking to gain share both within the APU part of the market, which mm -hmm. is really the meat or the mainstream part of the market, as well as with our FX product line that is more uh, aimed at enthusiasts and gaming. Okay. So when you talk about gaining market share, one of the challenges, obviously, you're fighting against, uh, you know, Intel. Yes. Where, what competitive advantages do you feel you've got with the new Trinity stuff compared to Intel? Where, oh. where do you think you fit into the jigsaw? Absolutely. It's really about compute um, OpenCL. You know, when you look at this architecture, it's really built for today and into the future where applications are going, both multi-threaded, moving from single-threaded to multi-threaded, but also moving into compute and OpenCL. You know, when you look at the ability to put a discrete level graphics on the same piece of silicon as x86, you really open up an entire world, you know, uh, teraflops of compute capability, highway lanes, if you will, that have never been available for software developers before. When you look at where the future is going, gesture, facial recognition, speech recognition, personal holodecks, all the wonderful things we've seen in Star Trek, Blade Runner, Star Wars movies, we all know what the future is but we haven't been able to really get there technologically. Mm. Compute and access to the parallel processing that's in graphics is really going to be the key to do that. That is our differentiator. Okay, Because obviously Intel are, are going to claim performance gains in their next generation um, desktop TP on graphics. Mm -hmm. Do you guys still think you'll be ahead of that? Well, yes, absolutely. Because we have the, the GPU, the graphics intellectual property that, that frankly they don't. And, and we sit um, in an in a interesting position. You know, we have one competitor that has x86. We have one competitor that has discrete level graphics. We're the only one that has both. And so again, that capability of putting it on the same piece of silicon really does give us a differentiation. Mm -hmm. But we have to work and continue to work with the software development community to be able to take advantage of all that parallel processing. And that's the work we're doing with our Fusion program, our Fusion partner program with that development community. Mm. You talk about the, the future, and obviously one of the big announcements we've got at the end of October is Windows 8. Yes. And there's, there seems to be, 
from the channel side of things, quite a lot of negativity towards it with it, you know, being a touch focused interface. Yeah, you can't and, get to the start menu easily. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's very tricky to, you know, it's a, it, obviously if Microsoft's successful, they're going to have a platform that works oh, across yes. multiple devices. Sure. Now you play in, in part of that at the moment. Where do you feel Windows 8 is actually going to benefit you guys? Do you think we're going to see a surge in system sales? You know, Well, I think we're all hoping I don't, in the market that we see a surge in system sales. You know, I, well, I think we're all hoping that, that Windows 8 is a good catalyst for the holiday time frame and um, spurring demand generation. I don't think anybody would mm. argue against that. I think for AMD, what really helps us with uh, an OS like Win 8 and frankly Win 7 mm. is this GPU acceleration. The more and more you can get to graphical mm. touch, eventually gesture, you know, we are the technology that's that's in the Xbox. We are the technology that's in the Wii. So, you know, the more that we can get to this visual representation and the more natural way we interface with our screens and technology, mm. that all benefits, again, this um, incredible graphics IP that we have at AMD. Mm. I think that, that Windows 7 was successful because Windows Vista was such a, a disaster. Yes, you it know, was also successful because it gave a good, I think, it gave a good experience a with this experience GPU without, acceleration. Yeah, it made a big difference. Yeah. And I think that yeah. you know Windows 8, I, the difference between Windows 7 and Windows 8 is negligible at the moment. I, yes. and I, but I do think it offers a channel opportunity to customize it more and add some more value in there. Because yes. at the moment, every system integrator ships similar right. software builds. Very know. true. I'll give you an example for the, the A series that's launching on October 2nd, the, mm. the Trinity product for the channel. Um, it has um, the widescreen capability with Ifinity. Now, Ifinity is native mm. with this APU, unlike the previous generation. So you get it with the product, and it gives you that widescreen um, immersiveness that you don't get if you're in, even in a multi-monitor setup mm. without Ifinity, where it would basically be your typical desktop. You know, you can move things across your screen, mm. but with Ifinity, you get that wide, whole peripheral vision immersive piece. So even with us, we're being uh, we're using it to help differentiate some of the experience you get on some of our features and technology. Okay. Going back to the the APU more so, yes. um, where when are we going to see some ultra ultra low power parts from on on the desktop? Meaning, you know, again talking about competitors of yours, they've talked yes. about these really low power units. When are we going to see that within a desktop environment from AMD? Well, um, you do see certainly. It depends on how you say ultra low power. We currently have product that's in the seventeen eighteen watt that you'll see in all in ones. Mm. We also because they're so highly efficient, the APU you also see them in really tiny little boxes, you know, kind of the size of a Wii or almost smaller for small form factor desktops. So you're already seeing APUs in there. And the more we're able to get to that performance per power curve down, you'll start seeing more. One of the things, though, that's interesting that we haven't seen really in the channel is a lot of traction with mini ITX mm. and these small form factors. All-in-ones clearly are growing. They're growing in places like China, um, uh, quite quickly. Mm. But what we don't see is a lot of uptake in the mini ITX and the small form factor. And we do think actually it's an, an opportunity for the channel to help differentiate and grow like they did with ATX years ago. Yeah, I think with the all-in-ones that the challenge the channel faces is if you're not a, a, a tier one OEM, it's very tricky to innovate because you buy something from China and you attempt to make it something special and it's yes, it's not the same as buying an iMac or yes. a, you know, Dell um, or HP Z, Z1 or whatever it is. Yes, and also again, we've had decades where the channel's been able to really get costs out of the ATX mm. platform and we understand how to do that and the plug and play. You also mm. need to be able to plug and play the components a lot easier. And we haven't been able to transfer that into the small form factor all in one world. And mm. again, there could be an opportunity there for the channel, potentially. Yeah. I think it's important they can innovate somehow. Exactly. So I agree. One big thing that also is happening towards the end of this year is Windows RT. Yes. And ARM um, and you know people coming out with you know effectively competing solutions based not on x86. Right. How does that play out for you guys? I know you you've, you've signed an agreement with ARM. You know what is the uh, what what does the land look like with that? And again, maybe in the desktop area too. Sure. Um, you know, I can't talk about future products here, and I won't talk about future products. But I can tell you that. Um, when you have this sort of, for lack of a better word, chaos that's mm. kind of sitting in this part of the under 500 mm. um, euros, US dollars, however you want to define it, market, um, it tends to be historically when you look, look at it, the little guys ha have won. You know, when you have some chaos, um, we've been in this juggernaut for quite some time um, in this fist battle. And at AMD, we welcome competition. So this coming in 
and kind of making the lay of the land a little bit more murky mm. and can't quite predict the future um, gives opportunity for everybody to come in with something mm. different and new and innovative. And it gets people to think differently about the ecosystem. How do you go to market? What are solutions? How do you measure performance? What about experience in ways mm. that maybe five years ago they didn't think of? So mm. we consider it a huge opportunity um, that, at, that is really at AMD's feet. We so you, have, see, we you have see it as a stir up of the industry then you see people doing something different with it? Exactly, because it, it changes the mentality. It changes mm. the way people think about all the things I just talked about, experience mm. and product and performance and ecosystem and how do you go to market. Mm. Um, the more competition you can bring in, then it tends to be the better rises to the top. No, I think that's right. fair. I mean, if, if we look at historically, you've had Intel versus AMD and ATI versus NVIDIA, and then suddenly different people are fighting different yeah. people, different things. And yeah. I think from my standpoint, it's, it's, it's great for the industry. I completely agree. And, it, and it, you know what? It's really great for the end user because yep. they'll get a better product. Mm. No, indeed. Um, so looking at the new APU that's launching, yes. um, do you, you know, what are the major call out new features or benefits to the end user? Sure. And what usage models are we going to see that we haven't seen before? You know, plugging it into your TV. We've been doing that for years. You know, yeah. doing gaming on it. Doing that. You know, what real new usage models are we going to see enabled by the new AMD APU? So for this generation, over the last generation, um, there's certainly, you know, we've got uh, almost 40% more graphics performance. We've got up to 800 megahertz more frequency per part than the competition. Um, we've got, you know, really a lot more software. We were maybe in the tens of software, um, you know, acceleration last year. We're in the hundreds. Beginning of 13, we'll be in the thousands. It's really about the software that brings it to life. So it's compute, 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 getting more and more compute capacity in that APU that just opens up those lines of uh, highway, uh, those lanes of highway for the, for the software development community. When you look at the future, we've seen it, as I said, it's in the movies. We're going to really, I talk about it as taking the screen away mm. between you and your computer, having that immersive, that natural um, dialogue with with your technology, gesture, facial, voice. Um, it's really going to be about those sorts of things and having that natural user interface. And that can come in a variety of different ways, right? Whatever will end up working for whatever type, type of device you have. But all of that takes an enormous amount of compute capacity that really you only get from the parallel processing in, in a GPU. You're the uh, the second senior person at AMD to mention to you about this holodeck style interface. Ah, uh, yes. Now um, the other guy um, is pretty crazy, and I, you know, took a pinch of salt. I'm not going to mention his name, but most people can probably guess who it was. <laughs> you know, when do you really think we're going to see something like that within the, the desktop environment? I would, I would say within a decade. It would be mine. That that whole kind of holodeck thing. Mm. But you will see gestures happen very very quickly. Mm. We will go a lot quicker to from touch to gesture than we mm. did from keys to gesture yeah. or keys, keys to, to touch. touch. Um, and so gesture is more important, I think. For, no one wants to touch a screen because no, you get fingerprints, right? Especially in, in um, well, it, I th exactly. And I think it'll make all-in-ones take off a little mm. easier. You know, we've always imagined all-in-ones sitting in kitchens and screens mm. on walls. You don't want to be touching everything. But also in my market in desktops, we see that as a very big deal because mm. it's one thing when you have a, um, a mobile device that you're touching. But when you're looking at a big screen, mm. you don't really, it's unnatural to, yeah. to reach over. But it's very natural to do this mm. or to gesture off your, um, your pad, so to speak, mm. and have that reflect on the screen. Those things are very natural. Mm -hmm. This will happen um, within a couple of years. Yeah, if not sooner, because yeah. you see Leap Motion with their demo yeah. and this sort of thing, and that, yeah. that stuff. I mean, where it's ubiquitous. It'll yeah. be ubiquitous by okay. a couple of years. Yes, absolutely. No, that's cool. That's it's, 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 it's good to see that change in industry as well, because we have been stuck with this keyboard and mice thing. And I will tell you, we wouldn't have it without compute. We mm -hmm. would not have it without that parallel processing technology. Okay. And just uh, in closing, one sort of final AMD-centric question. Sure. Where, you know, where is the focus for AMD at the moment? Because obviously we've got this tablet thing going, we've got uh, server and enterprise, we've got yeah. desktop, we've got notebook, and whatever other sector you guys decide to maybe do experiment yeah, in. we have embedded. Yeah, I meaning where are we going to see, where is the ma main focus at the moment? And is it a, a heavy focus on desktop or heavy commitment to de desktop for the next period? I would say it's a focus on mobility. Right. Clearly it's a focus because that's where the market is going. Mm. Um, but certainly, as I said, we want to make sure that we provide solutions for the desktop market as well. Mm. And they aren't always in, um, in, in direct competition mm. with each other. Right. This, every, everybody wants energy efficiency. Mm. Everybody wants more power 
um, in a lower wattage. And so all of that can really work just fine in the mm -hmm. desktop space as well. So we will continue to develop products for desktop, but clearly the mm -hmm. focus for AMD is mobility. Okay, that's good. The trouble is there's a lot of people who are wishing the death of desktop. Everyone, everything's about a laptop. You know, and... we have been, um, I don't, there's a, you know, there's a, a famous phrase about, you know, everybody just reports something from being dead, but mm. it continues to live. You know, I think it's completely exaggerated to say the desktop business is dying. Clearly it's not. And mm. I think with enthusiasts, um, and with emerging markets together, mm. both from one side of the market and the other from the other side, we'll keep mm. desktops alive for quite some time. That's good to know. So there you have the latest from AMD's desktop strategy from Leslie Sobin. Thank you for joining us on Hexus. My pleasure. We'll have a review next week on the AMD APU Trinity.